What's up everybody, my name is Alex Chung and today we are talking about beginner DSLR cameras. Your first DSLR camera is always going to have a special place in your heart, so it's important to make sure you pick the right one. Now over on the weekend AMAs, I get asked this question a lot, so hopefully by making this video, it helps you guys kind of narrow down what kind of cameras you guys should be getting. The point of having a beginner's camera is to learn how to use the camera, knowing how to change the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, and then learning how to edit raw photos or you know, edit videos if you're into videography instead. And once you've mastered these aspects of photography and videography, you then know what you want to shoot and what kind of things you're looking for in your next camera. And every camera that I talk about today will be linked down below in the description. So diving straight in, we'll be looking at five different cameras. And the first one that we're talking about today is the Canon SL3. This is an APS-C 24 megapixel camera that shoots five frames per second in photography and shoots up to 4K in video and 1080p up to 60 frames per second. It also has a flip out screen that is super useful when you're in awkward position trying to get the perfect shot. This camera also has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is amazing for both photos and videos. At $550 on Amazon, this definitely is a little bit of a pricey camera for beginners, but it definitely has a lot of useful features. Next up, we have the Nikon D3500. This is another 24 megapixel APS-C camera that shoots five frames per second in burst mode for photography and up to 60 frames per second in 1080p video. This camera doesn't have a flip out screen like the Canon SL3, but at around $450, this is a great beginner's camera to pick up and start shooting. And it comes with a bunch of accessories if you buy it in a bundle. Moving on, we have the Sony A6000. This is yet another 24 megapixel APS-C camera that shoots up to 11 frames per second in photography and up to 60 frames per second in 1080p video. This is honestly a great little camera for beginners to pick up and start shooting with. It's got a decent autofocusing system and it has a tilting screen to make it easier for you to see what you're shooting. Now this is one of Sony's mirrorless cameras and basically like the name suggests, it doesn't have a physical mirror like one of these DSLR cameras. A great example is the GH4 that I have in my hand right now. If I take off the lens, you can see that inside is just the bare sensor. There's no mirror, no nothing inside it. It's just the lens and then the sensor and nothing else. That's why it's called a mirrorless camera. And one of the huge benefits of a mirrorless system is that it's much lighter, it's much more compact. The lenses, as you can tell, are super tiny. This is a 20 millimeter pancake lens and using these mirrorless systems for traveling, for when you need to run and gun and you don't wanna carry a lot of heavy equipment, it's very useful during these situations. At $650, the Sony a6000 is definitely a little bit pricey even though it does come with a standard kit lens. But in my opinion, I think it is definitely worth every penny. And next we have the Canon T7, which you guessed it, it's another 24 megapixel APS-C camera that shoots three frames per second in photo mode and up to 30 frames per second in 1080p video. This camera doesn't have anything like a flip out screen or even a tilting screen so it does sort of lack a lot of features when it compares to some of the other cameras that I'm mentioning but at $450 it's definitely a great camera to start out with. And lastly, we have the Panasonic G7, which is a 16 megapixel micro four thirds mirrorless camera that shoots up to eight frames per second for photos and up to 24 frames per second in 4K video and up to 60 frames per second in 1080p video. And this is a fantastic little camera that is definitely worth a $500 price tag. It's got a fairly good autofocusing system and it's got a flip out screen. The advantage of a micro four thirds mirrorless camera is just again, how small it can be. This micro four thirds mirrorless system is definitely much smaller than any of my DSLR cameras. If you look right here, that is the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is a huge camera because it has a mirror inside of it. And because the Micro Four Thirds sensor is so small, these lenses don't have to be super huge in order to cover the entire sensor, which makes it a lot more portable, which makes it a lot more lightweight, and in some cases, a lot cheaper. And again, at $500, the Panasonic G7 is definitely worth the price tag. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you guys found it useful and I hope you liked it. My name is Alex Chung, and I'll see you later. Bye.